This is the Danger Close Podcast. Beyond the Books with me, Jack Carr. Welcome to the Danger Close Podcast, an Ironclad original presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. On this episode, I'll be taking some listener Q&A. So if you want to submit some questions in the future, be sure to follow the Danger Close Podcast on Instagram. You can follow me at Jack Carr USA over there as well. And if you like the podcast or these Q and A's, then please leave a five-star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. It certainly helps. All right, let's dive on in these questions. Here we go. Do you have any interest in writing some nonfiction in the future? I actually do have an interest in that. Um, probably not one of those, uh, this is what I did in Iraq and Afghanistan type thing, but, uh, some different, different history uh, type nonfiction. So, um, like I'll leave it at that for now. Just know that it is something that is on my radar. All right. Next one. Any new updates on the terminal list release date? Will you be offering a chance to buy signed copies of your new book? Thank you so much and keep writing away. Thank you so much for the support. So terminal list release date, by the time this drops, perhaps it will have been announced. Uh, maybe not. So it should be announced, uh, soon. I guess that's the way, best way to put it. But I think we're safe in saying sometime in 2022. And uh, signed copies, yep, nothing on the schedule yet, but I'm sure I'll do some sort of signed copy type of a campaign uh, in person or not, not sure yet, but keep following on uh, the newsletter on social media and uh, I will let you know as soon as I do. All right, will you be interviewing Christian Craighead anytime soon? For those who don't know, Christian Craighead is the SAS operator who on 15 January 2019 um, did something pretty special in Nairobi, Kenya. Saved a lot of lives that day. Took the initiative, ran, ran to the sound of the guns. Um, awesome guy. And uh, interesting you asked this today because I was just hanging out with him a couple days ago in Vegas. And uh, yeah, spent a good amount of time with him. And man, I got to tell you, he is a great guy. Humble inspiring. Uh, I mean, great head on his shoulders, obviously, as you can tell from what he did in Kenya three years ago. But um, yeah, incredible guy. Could not be more excited for what he has on the horizon. And yeah, he has a, a book going through the uh, the MOD over there in the UK. So I think when that is all uh, kind of uh, finalized, then uh, I think there's a good chance we will get him on the podcast. Cool. Yeah. Awesome question. Um, and how do you start preparing for an interview conversation with an author? Um, well, thus far, I have actually read every single book um, of the authors who have been on the podcast. I don't know if that's realistic going forward with everything that's going on, uh, or I might have to skim at some point. But uh, up to this point, I've read every one. And uh, as I go through, I'll put yellow stickies in there with a little note or a highlight, something like that. And then I'll come up with a list of questions. Um, if it's not someone that I already no. And, uh, then those questions I'll put a little number by that'll reference back to the book so that I can't, can open it if the conversation lends itself to doing that. So I can have like number three after I have something that I want to ask them and I can read flip to number three on my little yellow sticky, read that, and then talk about it a bit. So that's how I prepared for them thus far. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I love having love having authors on and getting to pick their brains a little bit. It's a professional development for me um, as well as for the audience. So, yes, what's next? Uh, do you foresee any secondary characters in the series, perhaps getting their own spinoff book? I do. Yeah, that was very deliberate on my part from the very beginning, which is uh, to create characters that and generations that uh, I could go back to and write about in the future. So, wanted to uh, kind of lay the foundation to have options going forward. So uh, we shall see. Let's see. Some of our presidents have been real badasses. If you had to pick one to go down range with, who would you choose? Ooh, that is such a good question. So uh, I don't prepare for these ahead of time, by the way. I just print and go. Um, give them a little skim maybe to make sure there's nothing <laughs> crazy, super crazy in there. But um, let's see. George Washington, perhaps. Grant, perhaps, um, Teddy Roosevelt, Rough Riders, perhaps. I think those uh, are the three that come instantly to mind. Of course, I'm probably missing something uh, blatantly obvious, but I'm going to go with George Washington just because uh, it's George Washington. Wouldn't want to go into battle with that guy. Okay, 
Here we go. And when you started writing the terminal list, were you already thinking forward to what is now in the blood? Great question. So when I started writing, I wrote down about six, seven, eight different ideas, like one page executive type summaries, something that you'd find maybe on a book jacket um, of these different ideas. And I laid them all out on the table. And then it was, it was quite obvious that uh, the terminal list was the one to start with, a novel of revenge without constraint. Um, I loved books with those themes growing up, movies, TV shows that had that theme of revenge. So I wanted to explore that right out of the gate, come out with something that was uh, hard-hitting, visceral, primal, violent uh, out of the gate. And I thought that one had the uh, most likelihood of being noticed by a New York publisher. Um, I wanted to write Savage Son first, but I knew that I couldn't jump in with that one because the characters weren't developed to a point where I could explore that theme of the dark side of man through the dynamic of hunter and hunted. So, uh, so I knew I had to start with the terminal list. Uh, and then when I got to the end of that one, I knew that was still wasn't quite ready for Savage Sun yet. Characters weren't quite there. James Reese needed to go on a journey of redemption, needed to learn to live again, needed to find that next mission in life, that next passion in life, which he finds, of course, in Mozambique, in True Believer. Um, and then the next one was, uh, was one that I had been thinking about for a while as far as the theme goes. So Devil's Hand is really about what the enemy has learned. And by enemy, I mean uh, anyone looking to exploit um, the, the, the gaps in what we have going on here in this country right now. So um, let's say Iran, let's say China, let's say North Korea, let's say Russia. Um, so I was thinking about those in particular, super empowered individuals, terrorist organizations, and what they've learned by watching us on the field of battle in Iraq and Afghanistan for the last 20 years at war. So I thought about that when I was in uniform, more from a, uh, out of a practical necessity. Uh, then as an author, I wanted to explore that as well, put myself in the enemy's shoes. Uh, and in devil's hand, of course, I chose Iran. Um, and I didn't just look at those last 20 years, although that's the majority of it. I also had characters that had a little more history to them, a little more background to them, who uh, could go back to those 20 years preceding 9-11. Also, like what did they learn from 1979 onward? What did they learn from our reaction to the uh, Marine barracks bombing in Beirut in 1983. Uh, what did they learn from Somalia, the Black Hawk Down incident? Um, I mean, our enemies are always watching. They're always learning. They're always adapting. Uh, what did they learn from COVID? What did they learn from our response to the civil unrest uh, in our streets? Um, so the, all those things, they're taking these lessons, they're applying them to future battle plans. So it was more on that fourth one in the devil's hand, the theme that I wanted to explore. And then of course, even between when I wrote uh, the first novel, second novel, third novel, the world changed uh, with COVID. And now we have our withdrawal from Afghanistan, enemies learning from that as well. Um, so that was a very long way of saying that uh, sometimes the themes uh, are what I thought of when I started writing, but some of the exact specifics have morphed over time because we have moved forward. Not the best way to put it as a society, we may have regressed a little bit as a country and as a society. But regardless, uh, the battle space has changed and I've adapted to that as well. So um, I still have a lot of ideas from those initial ones that I've written down. And then I have other ones that I've added to that pile over the last few years as well. So I'm not worried about ever running out of themes or ideas to explore in the pages of the novels. Let's see. You've mentioned Don Pendleton and the character Mac Bolan in some Instagram posts. Oh, I like this question already. And I believe you've mentioned them in a podcast. I'm sure I have. Uh, I grew up reading Max Adventures. My dad had started reading them when he was in the army. Nice. Shout out to dad in the army. Awesome. And had the entire collection. Would be cool hearing your connection background with Dawn and or influences you had from the Executioner series. Yes, what? Uh, if this picture on the wall over there wasn't behind a bunch of stuff right now with the move, uh, I'd go grab it because it's some original artwork um, from the Mac Bolan series that my wife got me for Christmas. You can scroll down on my Instagram to Christmas of 2020 and uh, and check that out. Um, but uh, it's an awesome original artwork. Looking at Mac Bolan right now, the executioner, Sergeant Mercy. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I read those. Uh, I think I started reading them, I want to say in about sixth grade. I think that's that's right. I uh, signed up for the, the fan club. So I got a box of books every month that had Able Team, Phoenix Force, I think like by two, two Mac Bolans in there, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and that was awesome. I mean, I have great memories of reading those books. And I'd read those in between waiting for the next David Morrell 
novel, who created, of course, Rambo in 1972 in First Blood, and had a series that started with uh, Brotherhood of the Rose, uh, and then went on to Fraternity of the Stone, League of Night and Fog. But back then, you didn't know when another book was coming out from an author. Um, so you couldn't just go online and find out. And a lot of them weren't on the one a year type of a schedule. Yeah, a couple were. Uh, I think Stephen King, Clive Cussler were on that, but really it wasn't until the late 90s that it became a, a thing. Like every year, if you have a series character, you're going to do one book a year and readers can kind of expect it to come out around the same time every year. So uh, so I'd read Mac Bolan and loved it. Had a great, great time. I always wanted them to make make a movie, of course, in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Uh, you're always hoping that they're going to turn your favorite series uh, of books or a book that you read and loved into a movie. So same thing with Mac Bolan. Of course, they, uh, you know, they never, never did or haven't yet anyway, but uh, I'm sure it certainly influenced me as did all the books that I read at that time um, by guys like David Morrell, Nelson DeMille, uh, Tom Clancy, AJ Quinnell, JC Pollock, Mark Olden, uh, Louis L'Amour, all these guys back in in that time frame that uh, really had, had that heart. All of their books had heart. They had this magic, and that's what I'm trying to capture as well as I try to move the ball forward and get a little better with each and every book. So. All right. Is the Eric Sawyer character in your books, private security contractor, based on a certain Eric P. from Holland, Michigan? If it's him, just blink twice. <laughs> That's a great question. So if you go back and look at my um, uh, my reading list from, I forget what month it came out, but um, usually I do talk about the books that influenced the book that is just coming out. So for the last one, I had some stacks because for The Devil's Hand, there was a lot of research because it was um, uh, had, a, had a biomedical uh, type of, uh, not a theme, but uh, kind of foundation to it all. And of course, I don't come from that background. So I had to do a lot of interviews, do a ton of reading, but uh, I always research no matter what it is. And even if I think I know what I'm talking about, like with sniper stuff, uh, I always double check because I know that readers out there are going to as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, the farther I get from actually being in the SEAL teams and actually being behind a scope uh, downrange, I need to, to check some of those things. So, um, and I always try to stay up on the on the latest and greatest as far as uh, sniper weapon systems go anyway. But, um, but in particular, the devil's hand uh, took a lot of research. So if you go back and look at those, you'll see uh, uh, Eric Prince's book. You'll see a couple books about him, about private security uh, companies in general. And uh, so uh, I'm sure there's a little bit of him in there, but it's more about the connection between those private military companies uh, and the government and that sort of a thing. So um, yeah, there we go. What books would you recommend for someone who would like to write a book in the future? Any advice for listeners who are considering a career in military intelligence, international relations? Read, read, read. So uh, I think that would be my advice to really to anyone who's about to do anything is um, get in the pages of books, put down the phone, uh, put your computer on airplane mode or turn off the Wi-Fi, I mean, for the computer um, and read history, understand, uh, the, the industry you're going to go into, um, not just what it is now, but where it came from, uh, why that industry has some of the practices that it does. Um, just dive into the history of whatever you want to do. So whether that's military intelligence, law enforcement, international relations, um, get out there and read, um, any books you'd recommend. So if you're going to write a book, you know, I think you can almost read too many books about how to do something, um, eventually you just have to get out there and do it. You have to sit down and write if you're going to write a book. Um, so for me, I read a couple and then I put them aside and I put a couple of them actually right there that I could see. And those were a series of books by Stephen Pressfield, who's been on the podcast before, but he has a series of books on creativity. And uh, the first one in that series is The War of Art. And really it's about sitting down and doing the work, um, because you can uh, you can think about how to do something all you all you want. You can read about how to do something all you want. Uh, you can worry about how hard it is, uh, but eventually you have to sit down and do the work. And even if you do the work, still might not get where you want to go. But you certainly won't get where you want to go if you don't do the work. And one of Stephen Press, Stephen Pressfield's books in that series is actually called 
do the work. Another one's called The Authentic Swing. Um, Turning Pro is another great one. So he has five or six books in that series that I highly recommend. Uh, if you're going to choose one, I'd start with The War of Art, then read the others. But they're very fast reads, so they won't distract you for too long. But when you hear someone like Stephen Pressfield, who, of course, wrote uh, Legend of Bagger Vance, uh, Tides of War, uh, Afghan Campaign, um, Gates of Fire, of course. Um, he has his latest one is called The Man at Arms. Uh, when someone like that is telling you, hey, these things, hey, you have to fight resistance. And there's so many things that are going to be, uh, that are going to be quote unquote resistance. Uh, and those are distractions a lot of times. So sit down and do the work. Sit down and write. I know I'm not the only one looking for healthy snacks for me and my family, especially after a very busy 2021 as we move into 2022. And if you've been following me, you know I'm looking forward to figuring out a schedule where I'm getting a little more sleep, where I'm getting some exercise, and where I am eating right. And that is where Paleo Valley comes in. Check them out, paleovalley.com. And you can use Danger Close 15 at checkout for 15% off your order. Now, this stuff is awesome. Paleo Valley, uh, how do I know it's awesome? because I just crushed a few of these beef sticks and these things are awesome. There's all sorts of different flavors, jalapeno, original, teriyaki, summer sausage, garlic summer sausage, and they are awesome. So Paleo Valley, thank you so much for sending these out to me. Uh, and for those that are wondering, these beef sticks are 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. Many on the market claim to be grass-fed, but actually are finished on grains. And they use beef sourced from small domestic farms in the U.S. This is a family-owned company, very small family-owned company. So they're making sure they do it right, that they are not cutting corners. They're prioritizing health over profit and uh, just an awesome group of people. What else do they send me here? I have these superfood bars here with grass-fed bone broth proteins. And there's all sorts of flavors here too. Pumpkin spice. How did you guys know? Awesome. Dark chocolate chip. <laughs> I'm going to crush those. Lemon meringue and apple cinnamon. Uh, all sorts of supplements out there. So be sure to go check out paleovalley.com. Enter clo code DANGERCLOSE15 for that 15% off your order. Once again, it's 100% grass-fed beef with higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins and minerals, and bioavailable protein. So thank you so much. I am fired up to get move into 2022 here. And uh, this will be a part of my journey. And look at this one right here. Uh, organic super greens. Oh yeah. I am all over that. So check them out. Paleovalley.com. Danger close 15 at checkout for 15% off that order. What sets elite performers like fortune 500 CEOs, Navy SEALs, record-breaking athletes, and cultural influencers. Apart from everyone else, how did some of the most successful people in the world get to where they are today? And how can you use their insights to pursue your own big goals and aspirations? Well, on Ironclad's new original podcast, One Week Challenge, we ask them. Each week, we bring different guests to issue a one-week challenge to listeners that will help them take their lives, careers, minds, and fitness to the next level. One of the ideas that Ironcloud was founded on is the belief that iron sharpens iron. That's why in each episode, you'll hear from some of the world's most high-performing leaders who will issue practical, thoughtful challenges to listeners that can be completed over the course of a single week. Subscribe now to One Week Challenge, an Ironcloud original series, wherever you get your podcasts. In your opinion... What is the best book to movie adaptation? Oh my goodness. I wish I'd thought about this. I wish I'd read this ahead of time and put a little more thought into it. Um, Cause I am a student of the genre. I'm a fan of the genre first and foremost, uh, which gave me a foundation from which to build. So I didn't just wake up one day as I was leaving the military and say, I'm gonna give this writing thing a try. Can you make any money at that? Hmm, let's give this a shot. No, I had a whole lifetime of reading, of reading books, watching their adaptation to film, watching their adaptation to a television show or back in the eighties, a mini series. Um, so I am a student of the genre first, which gave me a solid foundation from which to move forward and actually right. Um, so I didn't just at age 40 something decide, Hey, what should I have been reading for the previous 42 years, 43 years, uh, to give me this foundation? Who were the people who moved the ball forward as a genre? Um, no, I've been reading these guys my entire 
life. And I got to read them early on. Uh, I started in fifth grade about re reading the things that my parents were reading back then. Um, so I'm reading, that's when Tom Clancy's Hunt for Red October came out. So I've been reading these guys, reading for my whole life. And I've, I've loved it. It's been a huge part of my life, as you can tell from if you saw some of my past offices with the books behind me. Um, but uh, the best book to movie adaptation, and I, I hesitate to use the word best or favorite. Uh, maybe I do every now and again, but not often um, because these things are so subjective. But uh, I'm going to go with something that's very different, has a very different adaptation than the book. And I'm going to go with David Morrell's First Blood. So if you read the book, and there's a spoiler here, I don't, even though it was written in 1972, it's never been out of print uh, since. This is the 50th anniversary of, uh, of its publication. Um, I think I'm going to go with that because the movie is so different than the book, but they're both fantastic. And when I went into the terminal list and uh, was invited on to be an executive producer and advise on the scripts and be a, just a part of the entire process of turning it into a eight part series for Amazon prime with, with, uh, the showrunner, David DiGilio, uh, Chris Pratt, Antoine Fuqua, the director. Um, I mean, we had such a great team, but they invited me in because I had that foundation. And I think I put them at ease early on, uh, when I spoke about first blood and all the books that I had seen adapted to movie, so adapted to TV shows, uh, and knowing that it's going to be different because you're telling a story visually now. So um, I'm going with First Blood because it is so different. The movie is so different than the book, but both are fantastic and both have played a, uh, a huge part in my life. So I'm going with First Blood. All right. What is your favorite action movie, action series of all time? Oh my goodness. Once again, I wish I'd read these ahead of time. Uh, gosh, Lethal Weapon stands out to me right away. Of course, Indiana Jones, films, where there's a lost ark, obviously very pivotal. Uh, it's such a, such an outstanding film. Uh, all the Rambo films, amazing. Uh, they came out at a pivotal time in my life as well. Uh, action movie predator, I think still holds up these days. Love commando because that's of when it, uh, when it came out, love the Delta force with Chuck Norris, lone wolf McQuaid with Chuck Norris as well. Um, uncommon valor back in the day. Oh my gosh, what a great movie. Um, so I'm thinking, let's see, but series of all times. Then of course the most, uh, successful, uh, James Bond. Uh, and if you read the Ian Fleming novels, which are actually right over here on the shelf that I don't think you can see on the camera, um, it's just so interesting to see how Ian Fleming built this empire. Um, and, uh, and I think it's the longest running, uh, uh, film series of all time. Uh, the books obviously were taken over by another author after Ian Fleming passed away, um, and multiple authors over the years still running. Um, but to this, to this day, but, uh, yeah, amazing. Uh, so I think I got off the top of my head. I think I hit the, the big ones there, but it's so interesting to read the bond books, to see the film adaptations, to see how different, uh, actors have portrayed the uh, uh, James Bond over the years, um, the cultural differences from the movies in the 60s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, up through today. Um, it's it's a really interesting to, to study that. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I hit I think I had most of them, but might have might have left a few off there. But uh, at the top of my head, this early in the morning with uh, with only a couple cups of coffee in me, I'm going with that. Those. All right, is it true you make a cameo in the Terminal List? Hmm. You'll have to wait and see. Let's see. Visiting Park City soon. Any recommendations? Food, bars, wine, bookstores. Let's see. Of course, Dolly's Bookstore right there on Main Street. They usually have my books in there. And sometimes I drop in and uh, just sign away. Uh, so that, of course, High West is great. The one in town. And then also the actual distillery that's down the road about 15 minutes. They do a great brunch on Sundays. Uh, I'm not sure how it is with COVID, though. I haven't been there in a couple of years since this, uh, since COVID hit. So I'm not sure about that now, but, uh, of course, so much outdoor stuff to do around here. All depends what you, what you love. You can get out on a river by yourself, fly fishing, or you can hit the mountain on skis. You can even fly fishing in the winter here. It's awesome. Snow on the banks. Awesome. So love this place. What would be your ultimate expedition? Oh my goodness. Ultimate expedition. Gosh, gosh. In high school, I always wanted to take a kayak around Iceland that jumps to mind. Uh, circumnavigate Iceland in a kayak. I thought that would always be pretty cool. Um, do some overlanding stuff like they they used to do with the uh, the Land Rovers back in the day. Um, 
the the camel rally things. Uh, photos from that are just incredible. Um, so those would be those would be awesome. But uh, hunts around the world. I haven't done much hunting in Europe. I really like how all the different countries up there have have such different hunting traditions. So I'd like to explore that a little bit. Of course, back to Africa, um, back to Alaska. Love it up in Alaska. It's probably my favorite place uh, on the planet up there. Get to Kodiak out there again, uh, where we have our cold weather warfare training facility and the SEAL teams. Um, but yeah, I'm up, I'm up for it. I haven't spent much time in Central South America. I've been to Argentina, uh, went in to uh, Haiti back in, I think, 2004 when Aristide was deposed in the military. Um, but I haven't spent too much time in Central South America, so might need to uh, explore that part of the world at some point soon. Spent some time in Australia, New Zealand. Love to go back there. Amazing. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm up for anything. All right. Well, who do you have planned for podcasts in 2022? Uh, there are a lot of names on the book. There are more names on the books than there are slots to record. So um, yeah, super excited about the podcast. It's so much fun for me to sit down with people and just have a conversation. It's nice to turn off computers and phones and just have an excuse to sit here with no distractions and talk to an interesting person for an hour, two hours, whatever it ends up being. So I feel extremely fortunate to uh, to be doing this right now. And uh, I also feel, I'm so grateful for all the guests who have agreed to come on and uh, and spend time with me. So, um, so thank you to everybody who has uh, taken the time out to both be a guest and then to listen to the podcast and to leave a rating and review, which helps a ton. So if you're listening to this, please leave a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts, because it, uh, it certainly does help spread the word. And uh, thank you to everybody who has taken the time to follow me on social media as well. I try to put as much thought, time, energy, and effort into a single post as I do into a sentence, paragraph, chapter in my novels, because um, you have trusted me with your most valuable asset, your most valuable commodity, your time. And, uh, and I sincerely appreciate that. It is something I take very seriously. Um, so I'm going to put the requisite time into a post, into a blog, into my novels, uh, into anything that I say or do on this podcast. So uh, my goal is to provide something of value that uh, to anyone who's decided to take that time to spend with me. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the goal right there. Uh, thank you so much for spending that time. And thank you to Navy Federal Credit Union for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you to Sig Sauer. Thank you to Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, thank you to Simon & Schuster, Simon & Schuster Audio, and everyone out there who has taken a risk on me as an author and then told a friend, either by word of mouth or on your social media channels. Uh, it means the world. It is sincerely appreciated uh, and allows me to do what I love. So thank you so much for spending this time here. Take care out there. Be safe, stay strong, keep fighting.